<laughs> the following is a set of brief instructions on how to play the Dead Poets game. Most of you have probably never heard of this ancient phenomenon that circled around England in the late 1800s during the Industrial Revolution. This practice can still be used by certain people, but I must warn you that what you will partake in is extremely dangerous. You must follow all instructions perfectly, or else your very life will forever be endangered. Now you might be asking yourselves, what is the Dead Poets game? In the late 1800s, stories of ghosts and goblins were circling all throughout northern Europe. Everybody only thought of these spirits as mere fairy tales. It was of course all too true when one night at the London theatre someone performed this exact game in front of a large audience. The man was a psychic who was mostly renowned for his unbelievable talent of precognition. Alexander Kingsley was his name. He mostly performed magic tricks and various other acts of illusion that even I can't figure out. One of which was when he seemingly cut off his own foot and then reattached it in only 60 seconds. Of course, I'm just getting sidetracked. With the craze of the ghosts and demons becoming famous throughout the world, Alex used this to his advantage. He was going to play a little game that he had heard of and wanted to test out to see if it was real or not. The items needed are a candle, two glasses of wine, a table and two chairs. You'll see why later. Alexander heard the tales of what would happen if he played the game and thought it would be a good idea in order to bring in profit. You see, at the time his tricks had, well, gotten a little stale, if you know what I mean. The idea of actually summoning a ghost on stage was the perfect idea to reel in a crowd. Soon, posters and advertisements were plastered all across London. Come and see the mysterious ace, for tonight, at eight o'clock, he will summon the undead from their peaceful slumber. Come and see for yourself at the London Theatre House. Of course, this was back when literally everyone was a gullible idiot, although nothing has really changed, now has it? At that very night, Alexander, or Ace, was going to perform the game improperly. He wasn't acquainted with the key rules one has to follow, which are... Number one, you have to be alone. Number two, you have to do it in the place of where someone has died. And number three... You have to take everything seriously. Alex was disrespecting these rules to the core, and the punishment for not following these rules are... <laughs> well, you'll see later. The setup you have to follow is that you have to be in the vicinity of where someone has recently passed away. In fact, you need to place your table on the exact place in which they had died. You need to put your chair where the victim's head was pointing, and the other where the legs were. It also matters who died. It needs to be the body of a poet, hence the name The Dead Poets Game. A poet can also be described as a calm, well-spoken, and nice soul. So if your husband was a very humble and collected person, then you can play this game. The reason for this is because when you'll contact the spirit, it'll often take the shape of a soul trapped in that area. If you want to have a nice conversation with the spirit, you wouldn't want it taking the shape of a demon, now would you? And this brings us to the first rule. Be alone. If you aren't alone, then the spirit may possess the poor soul who didn't sit down in the head chair, as I call it. And trust me, it is very hard to save a soul from this fate. If the other person gets possessed, the ghost will have full control over the body. Sometimes, if it's a demon, then your friend may do unspeakable things to you and anyone around him or her. The same rules apply if you don't sit down in the head chair, or if you don't have the table placed in the right spot. If you're like me, at this point you've probably predicted the fate of poor Alexander and his audience. But trust me when I say this, not following the rule in which you're supposed to act in a sensible manner is the worst one of them all. And poor Alex was a 19th century magician with brightly flamboyant colors for clothes. Not following this could haunt you for the rest of your days, but the fact that Alexander was breaking all of these rules was far worse. To properly play, you must lock yourself in the room, closing all of the blinds, and be sure to do it at night. No light must enter the room at this time, except for the faint flickers of light emanating from the candle that you need to place on the table. Take out the two wine glasses and pour both glasses with the alcohol of your choosing. This symbolizes a peace offering to the spirit, showing that you mean no harm to him or her. 
I should remind you that you must have no form of technology inside the room. Also, you must make sure that you have no way of contacting anyone else in the outside world. To start, you must call to the spirit that you mean no harm to them. You pour their glass and raise your own and take a sip. If you have done this correctly, after lowering your glass, there will be someone sitting across from you. At this point, you must not display any signs of fear in your voice or in your facial expressions. You must not provoke the spirit in any way. You must act sensible. To start the game, you must say, I wish to start a match. The ghost will usually nod and raise the glass. The spirit will be taking the appearance and personality of the deceased body of your choosing. Remember that you must treat the spirit as if it actually is the body. If you don't, then you will be met with weird looks and eventual frustration and anger. And of course, nobody in their right mind would want to mess with a ghost. To play, you have to say what letter you want to be, either A or B. To say it, you must say, I strip you of the letter and say your letter. If done properly, the spirit will take another sip. I should remind you that every time the entity takes a drink, you must as well. For this will be your timer. When both glasses are empty, the spirit will leave. If both glasses are uneven, the spirit will not leave until you have finished. Now again, you might be thinking to yourself, that isn't so hard. All I have to do is finish drinking and then he or she leaves. What's the big deal? Well, I can certainly tell you that you would want to spend as much time away from this spirit as much as possible. You see, this creature is purposely trying to get you drunk so that you can reveal your deepest, darkest secrets. It can find out about your personal life, your job, your family, your relationships, etc. This is just a way so that the spirit can enter your mind and slowly dissolve it from the inside out. Just by choosing choice words, it can cause some people to commit suicide. Some entities have powers and abilities that we are yet to fully understand. And angering, pleasing, or agitating a spirit like this can have dire consequences. The game plays like this. Player A will ask a question, and Player B will have to answer it. After the spirit answers, it will take a sip. Then the letters will alternate. Then you will be Player B. The spirit will ask you a question, and then take a sip. You can ask any question you want, and so can him or her. You keep alternating until you both run out of wine. Now when this happens, whoever is Player A, when the wine runs out, automatically wins the game. If you win, the spirit will raise his or her glass and walk into the shadows. Remain seated, even when he's returned to his rightful place. Blow out the candle, turn on the lights, and exit the room. It sounds relatively easy, doesn't it? Of course, what happens when you lose... <laughs> well, that's a whole other story. You see, if you lose, then the spirit will blow out the candle. Turning on the light is probably the best defense mechanism against the spirit. Ghosts aren't drawn to light and often avoid it, but still, that doesn't mean you're safe. This spirit may start following you through your life. Every time you go into a dark room, you'll see it just out of the corner of your eye. Whenever you look into a mirror, you'll see it standing right behind you. It'll stalk you and hunt you down until you finally muster up the courage to say these words. This soul is yours. It is yours to do business with. Now if you say this successfully, then you black out. You will wake up in a room similar to your own, except darker and stranger. <laughs> There's no doors or windows, just a bed. You see, this spirit now has your soul, and it can choose to do whatever it wants with your body. Think of this strange realm as a sort of waiting room. As soon as someone else wants to play, you will be summoned and be forced to play. If you lose, then you will be forced back into that room, and you will have to wait again. Sounds pretty fucking easy, doesn't it? Usually you are the only person in this dimension, and until you are summoned, nobody else can enter. A year before the phenomenon had spread to England and made popularized by Alex, a violent prisoner named Pere played the game. Using the dead body area of his unlucky cellmate, he had heard of this game and had heard of the effects. He thought that if he lost and was summoned in somewhere like England, he would be able to make his escape from life imprisonment. So locked up in this French prison, he performed the game, and he purposely lost, not knowing just how horrible his fate actually was. He spent a whole year in his hellish prison, screaming in agony, banging on the concrete walls as he got no response from anyone or anything. And he went insane. He became the very definition of a demon. 
He wasn't able to form sentences. He couldn't self-harm. He couldn't think straight. And all he could think of was leaving that hellhole. Then, one cold November night, Alexander Kingsley released the demon from his cell. With no real way of a human form, and with an overwhelming audience of bodies to possess, Perret could not control himself. He was transformed into his natural body, except he had aged exponentially. He stank of feces and urine, his clothes were tattered and worn out, and he was screaming like a rabid dog. He was foaming from the mouth. He attacked Alex and took his body. Perret had become Mr. Kingsley. He ran out of the theater, crowds running after him, some calling him a genius and others calling him a monster. Alexander automatically lost the game. He didn't follow the rules, and thus his fate had befallen him. And so, if you've learnt anything from this, do not take the risk by playing this game. It will ruin you. It will destroy you. It will dismantle the very fabric of your world. But if you do choose to play this game, even after this warning, I suggest...